20 kilometers out of Khorotwande in the Ochoenjupa Great Region at a research station of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. It's called John Pandeni Research Station. We are piloting and testing labor-based debushing. Thinning encroacher bush and utilizing the wood can help Namibian farmers restore their rangeland, diversify income and enhance resilience to drought. The harvesting of bush is also a good way to create employment in rural areas. This is especially true when bush is harvested manually. What are the best situations for manual harvesting? Compared to mechanized methods, manual harvesting works best when the bush is not too thick and the area is mountainous or rocky. Manual harvesting also works best for charcoal and bush-based animal feed. Both processes require selection of the input material and this is best done manually. A pilot study shows that a team can thin up to 1.5 hectares per day using axe and panga and up to 4 hectares a day using power tools. Which tools work best? The axe and panga have a long tradition in Namibia. Workers are familiar with these tools and skilled in handling them. Investment and maintenance costs are low. The harvesting rate is lower than with power tools, but it is consistent. Power tools are faster when operators are well trained and have experience. But power tools also have higher investment and maintenance costs. Safety provisions are important when working with power tools and they definitely require prior training and regular maintenance. It is also important to choose power tools wisely. Chainsaws work for felling of bush between 40 to 180 mm diameter. Brush cutter mounted with a circular saw blade can be used for thinner bush with diameters between 10 to 60 mm. A clearing saw or a brush cutter with a circular saw blade can be used for debranching of felled bush with branch diameters not exceeding 60 millimeters. I've also learned with the workers talking to them and seeing what they are doing. Uh, the power tools are not so easy and they are not comfortable with it yet. Uh, it's very difficult to handle, especially the chainsaw. The X and the panga remain something that they are comfortable with. It's cost effective. They are faster with it. Where we want to do a bit of aftercare, with the X and the panga, you are able to do it with little effort. How do you build a good team? In an effective harvesting team, you have two people cutting down bush, pushing felled bushes over, debranching them and carrying out maintenance of the tools. A third person sorts the material and moves branches to one side and stem wood to the other. Worker number four moves all stem wood to the roadside where it can be picked up. Where bush needs to be chipped or hammer milled, this person carries it to the machine for processing. Persons five and six carry out aftercare activities, either stump burning, stump treatment or stump removal. Person number seven is responsible for data compilation and supervision. They demarcate the harvesting area and measure the biomass obtained. Persons 8 and 9 carry out support services such as cooking, cleaning and safety in the camp. The contractor, who could be counted as team member number 10, takes over management and leadership duties. They provide accommodation, cooking and ablution infrastructure as well as tools and spare parts for operations. They need to organize and provide rations and other supplies for the well-being of workers. The contractor also oversees the activities and reports to facilitating agents, landowners and the authorities such as the Directorate of Forestry. How do you get started? 
Before harvesting operations are started, contractors and clients need to discuss expectations in detail and ideally draft an agreement. They need to be clear about what type of harvesting is expected and where exactly. Support and maintenance tasks need to be listed and assigned. Budgets and funding need to be calculated as food, tools, spare parts, protective wear and fuel needs to be available at all times. What is your responsibility as a contractor? As a contractor, you need to make sure that you follow all statutory regulations for your company, including paying taxes and social security. Make sure you train your workers so that they stay safe and follow the environmental guidelines. Ensure that tools are available and keep them in a good running condition. With a good setup like this, you will be successful.